Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. What a joy it is to be here. First Baptist Church. Thank you so much for the invitation. I, I got with your dear pastor a little while ago and had a meal together and we sat down and we started talking and you know, we started talking about God doing miracles. Amen. I mean, we started talking about what's been going on the last 13 weeks and, and you know, in the last 13 weeks, I can tell you, your pastor and my pastor and, and people who are of the Lord, we've not been looking at a bunch of interruptions. We've been looking at wonderful opportunities. Amen. And God has been giving those us those opportunities. And we're excited to be here at the kickoff of your missions conference tonight. Ms. Burks and I are delighted. This is special for us with, a, with a, a tomorrow night being 19 years with Brother Scott. In fact, we started RU the same time he started RU uh, in Virginia. When I left the conference, he, he and I went to the same RU conference together with Brother Steve. He came to Michigan. I went to Lynchburg, Virginia. And we, we cranked our RUs up right away, and thank God for that. 19 years, that's hard to believe, isn't it? And coming on 20 years, we have Brother Willette scheduled for our big anniversary, 24 year, 20, yeah, 24. And uh, with the COVID-19, we had to move that because we couldn't have anybody in the services. And so we got him coming back for the, for the big one, the 25. And so we're excited about that. Thank you for allowing me, Pastor, to be here. We're so excited. I want to thank this church for being a faithful supporter for all of these years. I know that you know that you don't give to the church, you give through the church. Amen? And that's the goal, is to get the gospel around the world. And you've done that so well. And I thank you for your, for your, uh, for, for your support in the RU Recovery Program. Because your support has helped over 2,800 churches start the RU program. Amen? Your support has, uh, has brought nearly 200 people for the last 19 years or more to Rockford, Illinois for Rockford Training Days to become leaders and helpers and servers and directors. Amen. More than 200 every year. Your support has, has brought, has caused some of those directors now to become full-time pastors and they've, you know, they've given the RU to somebody else and now they're pastoring their churches and we just think that's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Your support has helped support the men's home that has over 75 people come into that home on a yearly basis to make, to make Christ honoring decisions, to get saved, to come to the cross, of salvation and the cross of surrender and the cross of Galatians 2.20, the spirit-filled life. We have a ladies' home and we see uh, over in that ladies' home, over 50 ladies come in that home every single year. And we're just excited. 28 foreign countries now have the RU program. We go several trips four or five times a year in foreign countries and see God continue to do this. Brother Scott can tell you stories in the Philippines, and uh, we're hoping to get back over there soon, and we trust that you'll pray for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. Take your Bible, turn to 1 Samuel chapter number 16. 1 Samuel chapter number 16. We're going to talk about David a little bit tonight, and the story of David, and if you know anything about the Bible, you know that King David and... King Jesus had some similarities. There was a, a parallel to their stories to give the Old Testament a frame of mind of the coming Messiah, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. And uh, when you look at David's life and you think of these two and you look at King David and, and Jesus, and uh, in the passage, we'll find out in just a few moments that he was anointed to be the king. And we know that Jesus is king as well. Amen. We, he will sit on the throne of David one day. And we're, we're, we're looking forward to that day and excited for that day. We know that both of them were born in a, in a town called Bethlehem. Ms. Brooks and I were there in December and so much enjoyed the trip. And I sat there in Bethlehem and then went to the city of David and thought about David as I looked at the buildings there and looked at the landscape there and thought through the stories of the Bible. We know that both were shepherds. We know that, that both of them, uh, were, were taken from being a shepherd and, became a king. And uh, we know that both of them fought 
fought a beast. Uh, we know that David fought lions and bears. And we know Jesus went to the wilderness and, and fought a beast. We know that David was sent by his brethren and he was even rejected. And we know Jesus came and he was rejected. He was despised of men. He came unto his own and his own received him not, the Bible says. We know that David uh, killed a giant. Stone went right in his head. Wounded his head, fell flat on the ground, took his sword and cut his head off, the, the, the big giant. But we know there was a Jesus who <laughs> wounded the serpent's head. Amen. What a great battle. We remember when David, he, um, he went to fight, he was given a promise. In fact, let me show it to you, First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17, not the text for tonight, but since you're there, chapter 16, flip over 17. This was the promise that was given to David. This is the promise that was given to the man that was going to slay the giant. Verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Well, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ defeated the old nasty devil. And we know he overcame death and hell and the grave. And he was promised a bride too. Amen. The bride of Christ. When you look at these stories and you see that the, the, the parallel of these two stories. And if you go back to chapter 16 in our text tonight. We're going to look at this story, and Samuel has come to anoint the next king. He goes into the house of Jesse. Jesse has sons there, and he goes in and be led of the Lord. He goes into Jesse. Jesse goes goes into the house of Jesse, and he begins to look over each of the boys. In fact, if you'll notice, David's not even there. He was an uninvited. He wasn't there. How do you think that made him feel? You know? He's out in the shepherd fields watching the sheep, and there was no invitation for David that day. And these other boys that were tall and handsome and fighters, and they were all lined up, and one by one they were brought before Samuel. Nope, this is not the one. Nope, this is not the one. Nope, this is not the one. And then the text says that Samuel says, is this, is this, is this all your children? Look, look at, look at what the Bible says. First Samuel 16, 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? Is, is this all of them? And then he says in the rest of this passage, verse 11. And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. So I begin to meditate on these different stories in the Bible and parallels between the King Jesus Christ and King David of Israel. I begin to think, you know what, that last line is going to, we will not sit down till he come hither. Hither. And tonight I want to begin the missions conference by throwing that theme out here for you today. We will not sit down till he come hither. Let's pray together. Father, would you meet with us in a special way? Thank you for First Baptist Church. Thank you for the miracles that are taking place here. And Lord, I pray that until you do come again, we will not sit down till you come hither. Lord, I pray that you'll use this church in a mighty way in the seasons in which we live. Not here, but not just here, but around the world. We thank you for the privilege to be here tonight. Would you use the message for thy sake and the gospel's sake? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will not sit down till he come hither. As I begin to think about this, I look at what, what Jesse said. Oh, he's, he's a shepherd. He's out in the fields. 
And again, there's another parallel because in Hebrews 13, Jesus was called the great shepherd. And he says he's going to help make you per perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Amen. You are invited. You're invited into this gospel plan. You're invited as part of the family here. You're invited in what missions is all about. And while we are waiting on Him, He is working in us and through us for the Great Commission. Amen. While we're waiting on Him, He's working in us. And that's the message tonight. God wants us to engage in His will. And as I read this passage, I'm like, man, that's got to that's gotta be a part of this whole story. We will not sit down till He come hither. I... Um, I, I enjoy sitting down once in a while, but my wife tells you, will tell you if you walk over here and ask her tonight, I don't sit down very often. I'm very fidgety. I got to move. I got to get up. And so 13 weeks ago, COVID-19 hit and uh, my schedule was full every single week. And, and uh, it was on Friday and I ended up in pastor's office and everything shut down and locked up in Rockford, Illinois and all of Illinois. And so we had to get out some word real quick that we were not going to have Friday night RU class. We were going to do it live stream. We've been doing that for many, many years. And so we put the Facebook stuff out and we send the emails out and we got a pretty good, uh, pretty good, um, uh, message out and only 25 people showed up. That's exactly what the mayor and the governor said we could have. And so 25 people was in the auditorium. And uh, and we've continued that now until a couple of weeks ago. He was able to open things up. We're doing 25% of our adult auditorium. The size of our auditorium is the number of people that we're bringing in. We're fixing to change that very, very quickly here. But it's, uh, I tell you, I, I mean, I, I think I was bored for after the first day and a half. My wife's like, oh, no, what am I going to do? I got to keep him busy. I gotta, and she, I, the house is in good shape now. We got new carpet and new flooring. And, you know, it's just been a lot of. But, you know, not just that. We've been seeing people saved. We've been seeing our online audience of RU grow to 7,000 plus on Friday nights and call in. People calling in Monday night and Wednesday night, listening to the broadcast. We give my personal service cell phone number and Ms. Brooks will tell you they called me in the middle of the night in the middle of the day hey you left your number I need to talk to somebody about being saved amen that's a good deal amen and yeah we will not sit down till he come hither and boy we haven't been sitting down now it's not time to sit down it's not time to sit down he's not come back yet amen I like the song that the men started the, started the night with what a what a fitting song for this kind of a theme but, you know, as I begin to look at this story, I begin to think of several things about this idea that we will not sit down till he come hither. Let's say that together. Ready? We will not sit down till he come hither. Who, who was in the room? Well, Jesse's family was in the room. And, and so was the prophet Samuel was in the room. And by the way, nobody else is looking for Jesus to return but his family members. Amen. The, the Fox News and CNN News is not looking for his return. I promise you. And it's good to come away. It's good to come to the house of God. It's give, good to give attendance to the reading of God's word and the things of God. It's good to take a break from all that out there and come here and find out what God says. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. And as I begin to think about this, you know, his family, the, the wicked world's not waiting for his return. The news crews are not waiting for his return. The world is not waiting for his return. But there ought to be some people in this room waiting for his return. Amen. We can't sit down till he comes. I, I don't like the do nothing generation that just sits down. I get a little nervous, you know, with this time, with, in, within our church, you know, you hear, oh, I'm learning so much. I'm through the crisis and crises can teach you lots of things. 
But it's important when you go through any crisis that the idea is for you not to have less of Jesus in your life, but to evaluate everything and have more of Jesus in your life. Amen? The idea of crisis is not for you to evaluate everything and say, oh, I've been too busy. I, I'm not going to be a Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night Christian anymore because I, I've been way too busy. Well, no, no, the crisis ought to have got your attention on some things you can take out of your life so you can put more of God in your life. Amen. That's what a crisis does. And boys, I begin to think about this. I, uh, the, 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 this idea of sitting and just doing nothing. I had a good friend that's in heaven now. His name is Jeff Johnson. And we worked at UPS in Chicago, Illinois. And we get off at a one o'clock class and we jump in the car and we take off to Chicago to get our paychecks on Friday. And we were dressed in suits and ties and came right out of chapel. We were going to get some food there. And then we, uh, we'd study there in Chicago. And then we change clothes and go in and go to work and work our schedule, Friday night schedule. And we walk in and we had a suit and tie on. And the first time we did this, we both had clipboards in our hands. And so we walk in and we're at all of these bays, hundreds of bays where the people are unloading the trucks. And you could, boxes were barely trickling out. And so we were walking in and all of a sudden we stop and Jeff says, hey, let's stop right here a minute. We just stopped and watched the guys for a few minutes. And all of a sudden the boxes started coming out faster. And we go to the next one and they start coming out faster. You're like, who are these guys? These are the big wigs or something, you know? We were nothing. We were college kids. But it was so fun every Friday to show up there and just walk and stop and look and walk and stop and look. And, and then get all the way to the end and all of a sudden you could see the boxes flying out of here and then way down there they were slowing up, you know? It's just amazing. And this idea, I wanted to stick in your mind. At, this year's missions, missions conference, we will not sit down until he come hither. Amen? So think about this. There's some other scriptures in the Bible that remind me of this theme. Luke chapter number 19 in your Bible, verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Amen? He didn't say sit down. He, he didn't say sit down. He didn't say just, just do what you could do. He said occupy. Occupy has nothing to do with just sitting down. Occupy is getting to work. Putting them to work. Occupy till I come. That word is the word pragmatimo. It's a, it, it means to carry out the business, to be engaged in the business. Well, I tell you, Carry out the bus ministry in 2020. Amen. Carry out the, the, the soul winning ministries of First Baptist Church. Carry out the RU ministry. Let's get, let's ramp it up. Brother Scott and I have been on the phone several times in the last 13 weeks thinking, Hey, we're going to rebuild. Let's go. We got to grow this thing. And we're figuring out a ways to double our classes. Amen. Hey, it's not time to sit down till he come hither. The Lord is investing in us and we're giving opportunities to invest in other people's lives. Man, it's not time to sit down either. Occupy till I come, he says. There's another one in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. He says, till I come, give attendance. Give attendance. Show up. It's time to show up when the book's preached and the doctrine is given and, and the, the word of God is laid forth. Amen? It's not time not to show up. It's not time not to be a part of that and try to get everyone that we can to be a part of that. For we will not sit down till he come hither. Occupy till I come. He says, till I come, give attendance to reading. Give attendance to doctrine. Give attendance to these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is another one I saw. In chapter 11, verse 26, it says, For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, talking about the Lord's Supper that you do on a monthly basis, it says, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Till he returns. It's all about showing this death and 
this burial and this resurrection and the price that was paid for our sins and the sins of the whole world. Amen. How often till he come? Till he come. I think this, the, the, these are the verses that begin to flood through my mind and my heart as I begin to filter through that one little statement in the Bible. We will not sit down till he come. Till he come hither. As I begin to think this, showing the Lord's death till he comes. Occupy till I, till I come. Uh, he says, give attendance to reading till I come. You know, in Matthew chapter number 10, it's when our Lord was with his disciples and he said, I want you to, I want you to go to this city. I want you to knock on the doors in this city. I want you to go to this door and this door and this door and this city. And then I want you to go to this village and I want you to go to this door and this door and this door. And, and then, then when you're done with that village, I want you to go to this city over here and, and this town over here. And, and then he says these words in, in, in the Bible in Matthew chapter 10. He says in verse 23, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Just keep knocking. Just keep visiting that bus route. Just keep visiting that RU group. Just keep making those phone calls. Just keep inviting people and keep inviting people. Just keep giving the missions. Just keep increasing that faith promise missions. Just keep adding those missionaries. Why? Because we've got to keep going until he comes hither. Amen. That's what this is all about. Go to the next house. Go to the next city. Keep it moving. Keep it going. This world is dying and going to a terrible, terrible place. My pastor was the only man that introduced to me to this idea. But, you know, during the days and age in which we live, we ought to be nice to everybody. Amen. Because if you look at the wicked world, the unsaved people that you rub shoulders with, do you know what? This is the best they've got it. If they die and go to a place called hell, there'll be no rest there. There'll be no peace there. There'll be, there'll be no, there'll, there'll be no, no, no light there. There'll be no savior there. There'll be no comforter there. And my pastor often reminds our church that this is the best they have it. So be nice to them and give them the gospel while you're at it. Amen. Look for ways to make them smile. Look for ways to, to get to know them. Look for ways to invite them to the Savior. Because without that, they, this is the best they got. From here on out, it's terrible. He says, for we will not sit down till he come hither. The Samuel, the prophet said that. No, 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 don't sit down. We're going we're gonna to wait. We're going to wait till you get, somebody go get him, bring him here. We're just going to wait. It literally means we're not going to turn and sit at a table. We're, we're, we're not going to move on to any other business. We're, we're just, we're just going we're, we're to wait. First Samuel 16, we will not sit down until he come hither. I encourage you during this month, during this time of missions that some of you are new. We, we have new people in our church all the time, new members and and, and we, we're, to, we're, we're called to be witnesses. We're called to give a testimony. You know, my, my testimony, you said, what is my testimony, Brother Birch? There's three things. Number one, ready? What, what I was before Christ. Okay? Now, don't spend too much time there because it will no longer be a testimony. It'll be a testimony. If you spend too much time there, it becomes a testimony. Amen? It's not about you and what you used to do, but, 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 but for just a brief moment, what you was before Christ, number two, how you received the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved, and then number three, what Christ has done in you and through you since then. For me, it was 1976. I grew up in church. I think I was just a few days old and in the nursery. My mom and dad, Ben and Joyce Birch, took me to Timberlake Baptist Church. And I grew up in a good church and with a good family. And, and, uh, and, and I, I never made any decision. I think I prayed as a, as a, maybe a fifth or sixth grade. I don't remember if I prayed or what I said. But I do remember when as a, I was 11 year old boy, 1976, July the 5th, July 4th, 1976 was the big centennial celebration. 
And that was on a Thursday. And then on a Friday was July 5th, 1976. And, and we have five day clubs. And Ray and Sue Dobbins opened their house up for our church to do a five day club. Mike Reynolds was the teacher. And, and we, it was the last day. And so we all showed up down there. Wasn't there the day before because of the festivities of July 4th. And, but the very next day where I was in the basement and he was going through Acts 16. And we came to verse 31. And the Holy Spirit of God smote my heart and I realized I am not saved. I do not know if I die that I go to heaven. And all the boys went upstairs and girls got, went up and got cookies and Kool-Aid. And he invited us to stay down here if we don't know for sure if you're going to go to heaven. All Everybody else is going to go get cookies and Kool-Aid. And i got to be honest with you, the first thing in my mind was, well, there won't be any cookies and Kool-Aid left. But I didn't care. I didn't care. Because I wanted to know for sure when I die, I'll go to heaven. And I stayed down there. Mike Reynolds opened his Bible and he showed me a few other verses. And we got on a green carpet and a green couch. And I got down on my knees and I called on the Lord and said, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And you're the only one that can do this work. And I, I believe you died for me, was buried and rose again. And you know what happened that day? I got saved. Amen. Man, thank God for the cross of Calvary. And not only a few, five years later, I come to a place of, of Romans 12, a, a cross of surrender. And that day I surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ to whatever, whatever he wanted me to do. And, and I felt he was calling me to preach. I went forward on a Sunday night and Elwood McQuaid uh, read my name. He says, Benny has come to, tonight to believe in God's calling to preach. Oh, this is a tough this is tough being a preacher, but let's pray for Benny right now. And he had a word of prayer, and everybody turned around and left the church. I mean, I think my mom and dad came over. They hugged me. They were glad. And then, But there was another man, Gordon Ingram, the elder of the church. He came over, and he, he said, son, get over here on your knees. And I got on my knees, and he got on his knees, and he said, I'm going to pray for you again. He says, a great decision you made today. Thank God. And it is always a great decision when you surrender all to the Lord. Amen? Years later, 19, right? 19 years later, I went to Rockford, Illinois and came to another cross called Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not my life, but his life being lived through me. That's what God's been doing in my life these years. And you know, you've got a story like that. You've got some kind of a, a if you, if you know the Lord's your Savior, share that. Share it. Share it often. He says, don't sit here. Uh, just, let, let's just stand. Let's just, we will not sit down until he come hither. As I begin to think about this, there's another thought. I'm going to give you a couple more. We're done tonight. He was saying, I don't want you to sit down. I want you to keep standing. Do you know how much of a theme that is in this book right here? I don't want you to sit down. I want you to stand. In fact, over in Ephesians chapter 6, I just did a series online for folks on YouTube. And it's on Armor Up. And in chapter 6 in Ephesians, he says, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. That's the only way you can be strong is in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Then he tells us about putting on the armor of God. But the, notice he says in verse 13. He says that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore. Stand. 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 This armor that he wants you to put us on. is so you won't just sit. Just stand. You can stand during these days. Amen. You can stand during crisis. You can stand during difficult days. You can stand during times of temptations, fellas. You can stand in the Lord. Amen. That's the theme that runs all through this Bible. And so obviously when I came to this passage, I'm thinking we will not sit down till he come hither. Thought about those other passages I just mentioned to you. And then I got to this one thinking, man, he wants us to stand, Pastor Al. Just stand. We don't need any more Christians to fall. We don't need any more families to fall out of church. We don't need any more people to graduate from Christian schools and then fall by the wayside. No! Stand! Just stand. As I begin to think about this passage, there was another one. 
And perhaps the real reason that Jesse, I'm sorry, that, that, that Samuel says, hey, we will not sit down until he returns hither. I think it was out of respect. There was a nation when called America that when presidents walked in the room, people stood out of respect. I don't think we ought to ever lose respect for God for, for offices that God has given. Amen? We ought to respect our pastors and respect those who 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 labor for us. Those we respect those who will give an account for us. Amen. I, I got to tell you, in my lifetime, we've we've had some a variety of presidents. But I tell you, when if I was ever close to them or around them, I I I'd get. I tell you one thing: this old boy'd stand up. Amen. I mean, in my house, when it was the time for the yearly speech by the president, we, we shut everything off and we listened to what he had to say. You know, a bride enters a room, people stand out of respect. That's what's going on in this passage. The king is getting ready to be anointed. I, I think the best I can figure, David's what, 12, 13, 14 years old, maybe 15? That means it'd be 15 years later before he would sit on the throne. This is his anointing. But Samuel says, no, no, let's not sit down. Let's just just wait till he comes back. Out of respect. Could I tell you, the job of missions, the job of of, of Acts 1-8, the job of Matthew 28, 19 and 20, the job of getting the gospel around the world, Out of respect for the one who gave it, we ought to stand. Amen? We ought to stand. It it ought to be a time when missions conference rolls around that when I'm going, we're going to stand. We're we're going to collectively come together. If, if, If God's people ought to be able to come together, I mean all together in perfect unity, it ought to be around the theme of missions more than anything else in the world. Anything else. Out of respect. Stan. Now, don't you notice, David didn't have that kind of respect. I mean, he wasn't even invited to begin with. I mean, there's not very much conversation between David about David about his dad, Jesse. He said more about his mom, handmaiden of the Lord, twice in the scriptures, talking about his mother. His brothers, remember when he showed up on the battlefield where the Goliath was down there saying, fee, fi, fo, fum, I want an Englishman, you know, that guy. And, and all of a sudden, David shows up. And they ridiculed him. They didn't have a lot of good say about him. There's one more thing. Look at, look at verse 12. We'll close with this. And he sent and bought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he who... Now the Lord's talking here. You know what the Lord said? He says, Arise. Wait a minute, I just thought the whole sermon's about, we will not sit down till he come hither. Could somebody tell me who sat down? Samuel sat down. Samuel sat down. Hey, this is not a time for bus captains to sit down. This is not a time for Sunday school teachers to sit down. This is not a time for preachers to sit down. This is not a time for staff members to sit down. This is not a time for choir members to sit down. This is not a time for those of us who are anointed by God. This is not a time to sit down. Amen. One of these days, whether it's the song that you heard at the beginning of the hour, or whether it's the rapture taking place, he is coming again. 
we will see him face to face until that day. Let's decide. We will not sit down till he comes hither. Father, bless the message tonight. We ask you to use this message to help us to look back at the last 13 weeks and look forward to the next year and stand up, stand up for Jesus, these soldiers of the cross. In Jesus' name we pray.